Hello, I'm Sean Boria of Boria Audio Laboratories. Today we're going to show you how to make a typical recording as they would in the studio in the 1890s. Now many people claim to do an 1890s style session, but there are some things to consider, and that is the recorder. Most people are using a late model recorder, but why not use a real 1890s recorder, such as this one? This is actually the type of recorder that they would have used in the 1890s. This has a glass recording dial from a French glass. Uh, this is a floating weight recorder. And you notice it has the old style knurling on the other side so you can easily change the diaphragms because they broke frequently in the early days. They would um, break if a soprano had too loud of a voice. Uh, <laughs> just like uh, Ella Fitzgerald, you know. I have a little wire spacer in there. Uh, this is set a certain way for higher blanks. Some of my blanks I use are a little higher, uh, thicker than most of the regular blanks. I make my own blanks here at Bori Audio Laboratories. So let's see how one of these 1890s recording sessions would have gone. Some things you need, of course you need this recorder. You need an Edison phonograph. This is an Edison Triumph, which has three big springs in it, and it's what they used at Edison Studio. Well, in the 1890s, they would have used either a Class M or an Edison spring motor, and the spring motor virtually is the same thing as a Triumph. With, and then the uh, guts, the phonograph of, of the spring motor was the same as a Class M, which a Triumph is very similar to a spring motor with a Class M style, uh, you know, works. So we got our brown wax blank. Um, this is an actual Bori Audio Laboratory brown wax blank. It's been uh, heating on the phonograph for about five or six minutes, which is typically when you do a good session. It takes a while because you need to heat those blanks up to about 85 to about 100 degrees, anywhere in there, and you get a very, very good recording. I mean, it's just a much better recording than if you use no heat. Room temperature recordings are mediocre. So let's try Uncle Josh and the UFO is what I'm going to record here. We got a horn that is 27 inches long and about 6 inches at the bell. Very typical to a recording session that was used in the original Cylinder Studios. I'm going to wind it up, make sure it's good and tight. We're setting it in about an eighth inch into the record. We're getting a good swerve. Uncle George Weathersby and the UFO by Mr. Sean Bory. <laughs> I was sitting on my back porch minding my own business when I happened to look out in the sky and I saw the strangest looking object I think I calculated I saw in all my born days. <laughs> It kind of reminded me about what Ezekiel talked about in the Bible. Kind of a wheel within a wheel. <laughs> well, just as fast as you could think, I was floating in the air in this blue beam of light. And I'll tell you that your Uncle George don't like heights by a darn sight. <laughs> well, well, when I got in that contraption, I saw the strangest critters I calculate I ever saw in all my born days, and I've been around pretty considerable. They look like praying mantises with big bug eyes and grayish green skin. <laughs> well, well, they shot me down in a chair, and I looked out the window, and I saw Earth getting smaller and smaller. Well, those critters tried to get something out of me. They had a hypodermic needle and was trying to jab me with it. And then I was flailing around and I pushed a button in there and that contraption started to flip in one way and then the other. And those critters got madder than a wet hen and went walk, 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 nash, nash, nash. <laughs> well, well, well. They strapped me down good in that jar and I looked out the window and I saw Pumpkin Center coming into view and they shot me down in my backyard and 
I don't know if I can tell people in Pumpkin Center that there are really is UFOs and creatures from outer space. Bungled again by chowder. <laughs> So we have just made this recording and I'm going to shut the light off so that you can see all of the swarf made by the recording. So we got, I'm going to shut this off so you can take a look at this. A good recording will have a lot of this white powder on the record. This is called swarf. And this is a Bore Audio Laboratory blank. This is an earlier one from about June of uh, 2012, actually. So this one's been around for a while aging. If you notice, it has um, a single spiral in it for a, a single spiral um, uh, thread in it. This is actually made with double-pressed octadecanoic acid or called steric acid. We look really close, you can kind of see the grooves on it. It's very typical of an 1890s recording as you would go in the studio. So now we are going to play back that recording after it has cooled some. So we've let the recording cool. We've put the big concert horn on it, the 56 inch concert horn. So uh, we're going to play back Uncle Josh and the UFO for you. So let's try it and see what we got. Okay, there you have it. That is how a vocal recording is made on a brown wax blank with the proper 1890s studio equipment. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. And remember to always use a real camel hair chip brush. There's nothing, no substitute. Soft, don't use a paintbrush, it'll scratch the records. And this again is an 1890s uh, automatic recorder. And you notice it's got swerf on the on the stylus. It has a glass diaphragm. And we are broadcasting this in high definition uh, um, video. So you get a good indication of uh, what's going on.